Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 8, Episode 7. So let's get to it, shall we? So the show started where it ended last week, which was with the girls quite a bit inebriated, but having a good time on the boat back to the hotel. Portia suggested that they play Never Have I Ever. And this is a game that is set up where you say what you've never had, and if you have done it, then you take a shot. So the girls a game, okay? We've already played this game before. It didn't work out well, but uh, Shamia, she's all for it. She jumps in right away and she says, never have I ever had a golden shower. I was like, oh, so it's gonna start off like this, huh? Portia takes a sip and I think uh, Sheree took a sip and uh, you know, quite a few of the girls, you know, <laughs> have partaken in uh, the getting peed on situation i guess so i mean if whatever floats your boat kim it's too much for kim she's already had enough okay we already had the cry breakdown back at the bar right so she gets up she goes and calls her um husband checks on him make sure that the you know the spaghetti is coming out well but you know it was all in fun like i didn't see no big deal about it you know some people are more prudish than others fine cynthia tried to jump in you know she was just like well never have i ever had a um, paid um, for a sexual um, encounter. I was like, what is she talking Never have you ever been a prostitute, Cynthia? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Poor Cynthia. She was just trying, bless her heart. You know, it was still looking like the girls were having a good time. We had the little issue with this Glenn boy, okay, who I still don't believe is really Tammy's nephew. She said that it was her nephew, but for some reason, I just wasn't getting the nephew vibe, but whatever. If she said it's her nephew, then fine. But you know, he had snapped at Kenya, and already we had our good eye on Mr. Glenn. So they get back to the damn house. You know, everybody's just like, Candy, come downstairs. You know, Candy Pregers. She stayed her ass at home, and good for her. So the girls get all changed in their bathing suits, and they're all out at the pool. Okay, Candy comes and sits outside, but she's kind of away from everybody because you know how it is when everybody is drunk and you the only one that's sober. So she's kind of sitting off to the side, kind of just peeping this whole thing. You know, Candy. He was just like, we bringing home strangers to the house now? Like, okay. <laughs> I was with Candy like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I told you guys last week, I'm all for the fun and games, but nigga, when it's time for me to lay my head down, I need to feel safe and I can't, you know, especially with them not even really knowing MTA, okay? So it was just like, an MTA is Tammy. MTA is Miley the Amazon. Okay, I want everybody to get this understanding because you guys seem to not know what I was talking about last week, even though I said it on the video and I notated on the video. MTA is Miley the Amazon, better known as Tammy. Y'all got that? She's sitting down, she's talking. Kim comes over because she spots that's the only sober person around. Somebody I guess maybe she can relate to at this time. And old Glenn comes over and was just like, so you got an attitude? And Candy was just like, uh, what are you talking about? He was just like, you know, as long as everybody's respectful, you know, I ain't gonna do nothing. Whatever the fuck he was saying. I was just like, what is he talking about? Like, why is he feeling like he has to throw his weight around? I can understand him feeling like Kenya snapped at him on the boat. Niggas don't like that, okay? Dudes do not like to be snapped at. I got that. Okay, but for you to take it all the way here, we at the fucking house. Okay, you got an attitude. Come on, dude. You know, he go and get in the pool. You know, he's telling, I ain't, you know, I ain't got the problem with none of these bitch ass bitches. I let everybody know. Whatever the fuck he was saying, I was just like, what is wrong with him? The girls, in my opinion, were all pretty much drunk. Kenya might be one of those ones who seem like she's more drunk than she really is. But for whatever reason, Kenya was able to spot that this nigga was crazy. I'm sorry, I don't see it any other way. The girls were all in the pool. Even when Sheree was talking to the guy, she was just like, well, what's going on? He was just like, you know, like, did I say anything? Or whatever he said to Sheree. I mean, I don't understand why none of the girls realized that he was tripping from the very beginning. And it was progressing, okay? For you to be like, I don't care about none of these bitch ass bitches, I show these bitches, you know? I was just like, I even watched it again this morning just so I can get a better clarification on how he was acting like none of that was appropriate. But the girls was having so much fun with everything else that was going on. I mean, Portia, I left all 
all my inhibitions in Atlanta. That bitch had her little bathing suit on. You know, she was dancing and doing the most. And like Candy said, you know, she went from being a Stepford wife to being like the queen of Thotland. She was doing the most. I was just like, okay, Portia, you taking it somewhere else. But like I said, they were all drinking and whatever. That guy, what was his name? What was his name, you guys? I don't remember his name. Dominique Oliver. <laughs> Rico Suave, as Candy called him. He was so smitten with all of them antics. We're going to talk about them a little later. But it was just too much really going on in the night. I would have been the one that been like, okay, this is where I'm going to have to tap out. And you guys saw that Candy saw it coming. Kim saw it coming. Cynthia saw it coming. Everybody was just like, yeah, this, is, this night ain't fixing to go well. Candy was just like, shit. And when the shit go down, you ain't going to have this big pregnant woman all in the middle of the tussle that's called street sense bitch you know when some shit is fixing to go down kenya came came over to candy and was just like you know something's not right about old boy they were just like i'm glad you noticed like he is definitely tripping she was just like yeah he's just been tripping the entire time like we was on the boat he was tripping we come back here he's saying thing. and candy was just like yeah he was just like popping off at the pregnant lady i was just like i didn't even say anything or do anything to you so kenya was just like he needs to go this is where the issue comes up with with Kenya. Kenya doesn't know how to um see me. I would have been like he needs to go, but I also would have removed myself from the situation. I would have just been like y'all motherfuckers gonna stay down here with that crazy nigga. He gonna do something to y'all, but his motherfucking ass needs to go. What Kenya does is a, a lot more confrontational, and this is this is where I see where people have issue with Kenya. You could even go and tell um, security like he has a problem. I feel like he is you know gonna be aggressive with the girls they may not see it but i'm uncomfortable with him being here can you remove him but for kenya to confront him is where the problem is so kenya already told the aunt mta your boy is crazy he needs to go the aunt had already told him like you know what they want you to leave you need to go that should have been it i agree with everybody on that point yet and still even with that what kenya said when they got inside of that house and that motherfucker went from zero to 100 real quick i was just like what the fuck is going on i mean he actually pushed mta out the way now first of all i really really think that he and mta both was high as fuck and i'm not talking about just drinking and i'm not talking about on no weed the motherfuckers was coked up or on some molly or something because the entire time they were strange they were weird for him to push her down and for her to completely knock out that fast i don't know maybe she hit her head but uh she was knocked out nigga that's a I'm fucked up kind of knocked out what it looked like to me. When she was laid down on that ground, when she opened her eyes, she's looking like everybody, <laughs> looking at her, you know, you just be shocked. Like, what the fuck is going on? And then security finally comes in after he was already like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll fuck a bitch up, basically. He was about to do something to Kenya if they hadn't come up there and stopped it. And then he gonna fight all them big ass fucking security. And you guys still mean to tell me that it wasn't nothing wrong with this motherfucker really people are still blaming kenya okay listen kenya did shake the hornet's nest like kim said but that is no excuse for this motherfucker to do what he did and if anybody gets in my comments and says well what about what she did to portia portia is another fucking woman this is a big ass man most women can't win no fight against no damn man so this nigga coming towards her and yet no i'm not there for it that's exactly why i always say that men don't need to be added to real housewives of atlanta they bring an aggressiveness to the show that takes it past the cattiness and the pettiness and the shade and all that men don't do shade they want to fucking resolve shit they want to fight they wanted to get physical. So that's why he didn't even need to be there. You know, so on Twitter, people was really trying to say that, you know, she made it worse. It's still, it's not, it's no excuse. He was tripping and he needed to go. Once they got them gone, you got the girls all discussing, you know, whether or not Kenya made it worse. Phaedra, both Phaedra and um, Kim felt like she made the situation worse. Even Portia was just like, you know, she just made it bigger. But I still don't know if they saw a lot of the same things that that kenya said saw you know because portia was so busy with old boy and the girls was it was just oh, it was just frustrating it was a mess 
So Kim, you know, because it was entirely too much for her at this point, she decided to leave, go to a hotel. I probably would have done the same too because I would have just been so fucking over this whole entire time. Then, you know, the girls, I guess they all just hunkered down for the night. But the next morning, we see that, you know, Candy, she's on the phone with Todd. And Todd was like, you bring your ass home because we don't do this kind of shit. You know, and Candy was just like, I know when I'm pregnant and we work entirely too hard for this baby. <laughs> right. Go home, okay? Because this is too much. While she's packing, Kenya comes to the door. And uh, shortly after Kenya gets there, then Cynthia gets there. And, you know, Candy was just like, do you know they came back last night? And we get to see this video that Candy ended up posting on her IG. You know, the girls are all sitting around. It's Phaedra, it's Candy, it's Portia, it's Shamia. And they just sitting around talking charade. They just sitting around talking, laughing or whatever. And there's a knock at the door. Portia goes and runs to the door. You know, and she's like, who is it? And they say it's um, <laughs> MTA. You know, they just like, whatever, bitch, stop playing. She opens that door and then she's just like closes it like it's okay and then she was just like hi and you guys when they showed Tammy's face and I don't know if it was a combination of the sound effects of the music or what but that bitch looks scary to me okay she was just standing there in her fucking hospital robe in her damn um hospital socks like where the fuck are all my clothes that's what I wanted but still that shit was scary like bitch don't come back over here after you done went off on a bad trip you and your crazy ass nephew I guess they say that they hopped the fence or whatever and was able to get in there like can you even picture that just the craziness of that but trying to get her stuff or whatever but yeah i i was just like what the fuck is wrong with the real housewives of atlanta security that you let the heifer through anyway after the motherfuckers cut up like ciao you know they're watching the video and even kenya's like that bitch is crazy cynthia feels bad oh i forgot to tell you that cynthia and kenya had got into an argument the night before because cynthia felt bad you know i feel bad because i brought mta around the group kenya's like this shit is not your fault don't even start that shit cynthia like i'm tired of your ass you know she was just like going on and on like i'm gonna go check on her like why can't i check her and kenya's like i didn't say you can't check on her i said don't try to make this be about your being about your fault you didn't do this he was the crazy ass motherfucker you know Cynthia was just like well why are you fussing at me and she was just like I'm just saying don't be turning up in my ear and then Cynthia was like you don't want me to turn up in your ear you was the one that was turning up first I was just like Cynthia is so she's so bad at fighting girl just go do what you want to do and shut up but the next day when they were watching the video you know Cynthia was still again she felt bad you know that the girls was making such fun and you know her friend you know didn't feel well was in the hospital and then you know they were Cynthia, your girl is crazy. I had heard some stories about this person <laughs> before, but um, I didn't expect all of this. Old girl is crazy. She, If they was really thinking about giving her a peach initially, ain't no way she would have ever worked out. That bitch got a drug problem or something. You can't tell me that they wasn't hopped up on something. We jump back to Atlanta. Kim is back home. Her and her big old um, dandelion hair. <laughs> One of my commenters said that, um, yeah, we're going to call that bitch dandelion. She was walking in the park with her husband. I just, it's so hard to explain these kind of things or review these kind of things because I can understand how she feels in one way and the other way I don't agree with her so when they sit down and you know she's just telling them like you know Kenya made the situation worse which I already told you guys that I didn't think that it still mattered that Kenya didn't you know all that shit that happened we cannot blame on Kenya but I like the fact that you know Kim is gonna stay true to whatever she believes and if that's felt like she needed to leave the situation and not be peer pressured into staying with the shenanigans if that's not what you are about then that's all good i was looking at that husband i was like he don't look gay to me he just mousy he just a little old teeny tiny scrawny something but you know they seem to have something really nice so it's fine if that's what they have and she's happy with them then fine but i still i, I still we fundamentally don't under don't agree on the night that out in miami but Now, let's go back to um, Miami one more time. Sheree and Phaedra's conversation. I want somebody to explain to me why is it that we go from Phaedra blaming Kenya for what happened to her being in St. Louis where Mike Brown was killed and how she sat with the mother and how she started crying. I was just like, what the fuck is we talking about here? Like, are we really forcing a moment? We really trying to make a moment happen here? Like, what does this have to do with anything? Like, I'm not understanding.
Jasmine, was she saying that Glenn is comparable to Mike? <laughs> the fact that Glenn Rice was tripping the way he was, he was going to beat a bitch's ass. He was high. How do you explain? How do you compare it? Like, if I was Mike Brown's mother last night, I would have been like, um, don't compare my son to a nigga that's tripping on TV. If we felt the way that we felt about Mike Brown, that he was gunned down and he shouldn't have been, this is something totally different. This motherfucker was crazy. If somebody who pulled a gun out and shot his ass, I'd have been like, that's what the nigga get. Because I'm looking at him cut up right there. <sighs> I mean, I wouldn't want him to be dead or nothing, but shoot the nigga in the knee or something. But, uh, yeah, I just didn't get that Phaedra getting emotional and crying. Yes, we do have to protect our boys. We have to explain things to our boys, okay, so that they know how to react in certain situations. But it's it didn't compare to me. So I, I just, I was just like, whatever. Now, Portia, she gets all dolled up because she's going out with old Rico Suave. And when they go out, it's so funny because the entire time she's just like, <laughs> that was almost the Althea laugh. Huh? But the whole time she's laughing because she's uncomfortable because now she's sober and she's not acting the way she was acting the night before. And our boy is still going on the way she was acting the night before. Okay, all them booty antics and dancing and doing all this nasty, sexy talk and all of that. Okay, so now that they... Out, he's all just like, oh, you look like you do squats. And she's just like, are you trying to say you want to see me do a squat? He's like, no, bitch, I want you to squat on me. And then he was like, you look real good. The nigga tried to swoop in for a kiss. And she was just like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You trying to get a kiss from me? I said, girl, this is exactly what happens when you then got your ass entirely too drunk. And then the next day, you can't remember what kind of hole you was. You know, the guy was keeping on. He was putting the pressure on and all that she finally went on ahead and kissed him or whatever and um when she ended up getting back to the house and everybody was there because the girls didn't end up going out this this next night because shit too much had didn't happen okay so they cooked and stayed at the house she gets home and all them old ass bitches is still asleep i tell you when me and my girlfriends go out we will turn up real real big that first night honey that next day we be so fucking tired we hurry up and gets the turn up on and then honey that next day be like child i'm feeling to just chill at the hotel <laughs> go get some dinner and come on back and call it a night shit you know she wakes them all up and they all all go together in the room and you know she tells them about her date Cynthia's just like well I'm just glad that we had this redo I'm kind of glad that you know all of the shit happened just so that we can have this redo so that we can all be here together today you know because I had a blast and I was just like oh see you guys I know y'all gonna be like the shit is fake and phony and corny but it's still entertaining to me you know beefs don't last that long and you know everybody was able to come together as one this is a come together as one moment y'all y'all see that like that <laughs> and then lastly um you know when they get back to atlanta kenya goes and sits down with kim so that they can try to rehash and work through this uh confrontation down in miami i mean kenya starts it off wrong it was just like i just wanted to talk to you um about you know what happened i know you have like this struggle you have this issue with your family and being away and she was just like wait a minute <laughs> Uh, that's not what that was, okay? I know I had my little issue earlier, but me leaving and me saying that I wasn't going to be sitting around that bullshit has nothing to do with my family. It was the fact that I didn't feel safe with the shit that was going on there, and that's the reason that I fucking left. Kenya was trying to make it seem like she left because she really wanted to be with her family. I was just like, Kenya, well, come on now. You saw all that shit happen. Like, I would have left too. I think a lot of people that would have been over the bullshit would have been, you know, would have left. Ain't used to that kind of situation. This is her first year so i can understand why kim left and she made it very clear like i'm not with this bullshit and kim stuck with that like no you're not gonna make this be about me being away from my family and crying and being upset okay don't link the two okay so again i like the fact because last week people were saying that you know kim didn't stand strong and how she felt and you know all of that i'm glad that this time she did stand strong she let kenya know bitch no that's not what the fuck what it was i'm a grown-ass woman i know when it's 
situation ain't right for me. And Kenya did not get to make it be about the fact that she's away from her family and all of that. So I'm glad she stood up to Kenya and it was definitely so this time. Okay, she didn't let Kenya get into her little shadiness and try to do these quick little jibs and jabs and all of that. So I do like Kim for that fact. But, I, you know, I'm going to stick to the way I felt before, which is I don't think that it is Kenya's fault that the night happened the way it did. What did you guys think? All right, you guys, so let me get off of here. Got to get to work. I did all this before work. Got a busy ass week this week. So I'm trying to make everything happen because I'm going on vacation. All right, you guys. Anyway, make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Miss Rock. The channel is Forwards Rocks, and everything else I'll do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.